So we're looking at a crepe myrtle uh, here at the Philbrook Museum. And uh, crepe myrtles are a beautiful sh flowering shrub. They, sh they, sh they flower all summer and on into fall. And we've got a lot of different colors on crepe myrtles. They have great bark and we're, we really love crepe myrtles, probably our favorite. So, but what we found, we found some uh, scale that has been attacking crepe myrtles lately. Uh, it's called a crepe myrtle bark scale and uh, we, ha we have seen it a lot in Tulsa. So um, what I wanted to show in this segment is, is the scale and uh, a little bit of examples of the scale. But here with us is the director of horticulture at Philbrook is Sheila Knotts and uh, we're excited to, to have her and be at her location and, and talk a little bit about her crepe myrtle. Sheila, thanks for having us. Sure, thanks for coming. So, so the, the, the scales, you, we, you said you started yeah. noticing them this year and um, it, it's, it is kind of a scary thing because we do have a lot of crepe myrtles around and, and uh, you know, anything that attacks a, a lot of plants, we're going we're gonna to have issues. So uh, tell us when you found them and what, what you saw. Sure, yeah, it was just about five or six weeks ago now that we first saw it and we've just seen it on these crepe myrtles that are up here in the South Formal Garden. And so we just started noticing the kind of white fuzzy, you know, insects there on the, where we had cuts made. The, the crepe myrtle bark scale has, it, it kind of has three life cycles here. It kind of runs three, three life cycles throughout the year. And uh, what we're seeing, it, it is new. It's a pest that came from China. They, they noticed it in Texas, uh, in Dallas area in 2004. The landscape company found them and then the, so they started doing a little study and a little research and then they just kind of grown from there so they're throughout the midwest so how do you care for these do you do you cut these back how, how, how exactly do you take care of these here yeah we do cut these back every year just from the location they're in and the size we're trying to maintain right here we do have other crepe myrtles on property that we don't cut back and we have not found the scale on those yet um, but you know we're just looking at trying to maintain them and we have the beehives on property so what we're going to be doing to take care of this without negatively impacting our bees correct yeah and it's it's one of those that you know we are seeing it the the, the scale has a piercing sucking mouth part so it likes the tender growth the new fresh growth so when you go and cut those back every year that growth is pretty tender so they can get in versus the the wood material that may be a year old they just can't penetrate that as well Okay, so control on crepe myrtle bark scale is is kind of a, a, a new territory. We've we've controlled different scales in the past, and but this one this one's called a felt type scale. And what they do, they they extrude and and kind of grow a felty material on their backs uh, as they connect to that plant. And one of the options is uh, is a dormant oil, is a winter dormant oil that we've done with other scales before. So we will coat that that whole crepe myrtle limb with a heavy dormant oil or heavy heavy horticulture oil. Um, the other options would be is, is chemicals. We have a couple chemicals, maybe some contact chemicals that, that can work. Uh, not so effective because of that waxy substance. Some of the chemicals that we, we can use, you know, we, we do want to be careful when the bees are active. Um, some of the systemics will get inside the plant and, and it can transfer that chemical through the pollen and then harm the bees. Um, and then we were talking earlier about actually getting in there and mechanically removing, getting in there and scrubbing. So uh, what, what do you think y'all's y'all options, what do you think your best options are going to be? I think, try? yeah, we're going to try the mechanical and then we're looking at maybe getting a few beneficial insects in and so just some general predators since they don't really seem to have anything specifically for the crepe myrtle bark scale yet. Okay, so maybe some lady beetles and maybe some lace wings and, and right. things like yeah. that. Well, that, that will be, that should help, but you know, it, it's hard. We're, we're in new ground, new territory. So we're, we're going to, you know, scouting, uh, watching, keeping that tree healthy. And, you know, another thing that I haven't mentioned is the sooty mold. Sooty mold's been around and it comes off of aphids and any, any honeydew secre secreting insects. So they're going to they're gonna suck and, and, and feed on the juices. Those juices are going to go through their body and come out the other side as a, as a honey substance or a sugary substance. So that's one way to tell if you have crepe myrtle bark scale. If you have that black kind of powdery sooty mold looking uh, material underneath, especially in the fall. Um, another way to tell is you got a lot of ants. The ants will go in and harvest the honeydew and 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 then that's sugary so they're going to take that and they're going to you know there's going to be a lot of ant movement around that trunk. So uh, another good thing for a homeowner to do is watch watch for the ants, watch for the sooty molds and then of course watch for that crepe myrtle bark scale that you can see. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. 
You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.